Hey guys, uh, I decided I'm gonna try doing this thing again. Um, so this is gonna be like a weekly uh, reads slash update thing. Um, I guess I will talk about the books first or not. I don't see, I don't know, now I'm all confused. Um, I'll just give you a little update first, right? I feel like that makes more sense for some reason in my brain. Um, so everything is the exact same with me. Uh, the cats turned a year old last month at the end of August. So, you know, uh, it's kind of sad. I feel like part of the reason that I was feeling like kind of overwhelmed uh, by this is just because I was doing weekly vlogs and I was like behind on my vlogs and I would never have enough space on my computer to like put the footage on there. And I just, you know, so I'm taking that stress away from me and I'm not going to be doing that anymore. Um, I'll do them again if you know something fun happens. So I still have a vlog from my uh, road trip that I would like to edit and put together um, but I'm not gonna just like be doing it. My life's so boring anyways it doesn't you know uh, whatever. Anyways um, also I am currently doing the Whole30 diet which is difficult. Um, so Whole30 is like no grains, no dairy, no legumes, no added sugar, and no like sulfites or MSG or like any, no like additives or preservatives or anything. So basically just, you know, meat, fish, veggies, and fruit, just like regular food. <laughs> so um, it's really hard. I didn't realize how much pasta. I basically only ate sandwiches before, so... It is a little difficult, um, especially like coffee. Now I can actually taste the flavor. Oh, you can see it's steaming. I haven't had a sip of this yet because it's way too hot. Um, but I can actually taste the flavor of the coffee now because I usually put a little bit of almond milk in my coffee. Um, so, you know, uh, today's day 14 of that. So we've got just about two, two weeks plus a couple days left. Um, definitely excited to eat some rice, people. <sighs> I miss it so much. All right, uh, I feel like that is all the update that I have to do. I'm tired because I haven't had any of my coffee yet. I will say though, with regards to the Whole30, I feel really incredible. Uh, before the Whole30, I um, I mean, I feel lethargic right now just because I slept like 10 hours and I haven't had any coffee yet. But in general, I feel like more alert and um, I, uh, I don't have like any, baby, no, no, no. <laughs> Um, I usually feel like heavy and like gassy and just like not like not great like intestinally um, My joints really hurt too and I was hoping that this would make my joints not hurt But that's not the case. My knee still really gives me a lot of trouble um, So I think I just need to like start exercising <laughs> Whatever, um, but like my you know core area like where the belly bits are uh, do feel really great so if anyone was thinking about doing it, um, I would recommend it. The hardest part is no soda for me, to be honest with you. Um, I miss I miss having soda, which is weird because I didn't even think that I liked soda that much. I usually just drink it when Jake drinks it, but I miss, I miss that sh soda pop. Okay, so things that I am currently reading. Um, I'm hoping to finish this today. This is um, The Best American Non-Required Reading by... Um, it's edited by Dave Eggers. And uh, the introduction is by David Sedaris. And then this little cartoon on the front is by Maurice Sendak, uh, which is really cute. Um, so I have mentioned this series uh, before. I Oh, gosh. Well, just like in general, the Best American series. I like love them so much. I've only read, um, you know, one short story collection. And this is the second non-required reading. Um, but the non-required reading one specifically is edit, like put together by um, high school students. So I forget where he says that they are, but I think there's like two groups of high school students that they basically get together and then they're all reading different publications. So, you know, there's stuff in here from like the New Yorker and Granta and um, Ninth Letter and just, just a bunch of different places. And um, they... I'll like sit and then if they if one of them reads something that they think is really impactful um Dave, uh, Dave like or whoever is like the group leader I think it's just Dave at least at one of the high schools um he photocopies it and gives uh one to all of the students and they all read it and kind of discuss and decide if they want to put it in the collection or not uh, which I think is just like so cool all the proceeds for this specific one to go to the 826 foundation um 
which let me see if there's info back here, but it's, um, it's, you know, like writing and reading workshops. Um, I think it's a writing center. Um, so there's like a bunch of info on the different ones in the back. Um, so I think that's really cool too about the second hand. So, you know, but still, <laughs> originally the, the proceeds went to AT6, which I think is really wonderful. Um, all the stories so far have been great. I, I definitely, definitely want to finish this. I'm trying to read 24 hours again. I'm a, trying to read 24 hours again. I mean, I'm again trying to read for 24 hours. I have not actually ever hit 24 hours, but it's a goal every weekend. And this weekend, I feel good about it. <laughs> um, so there's one in here about um, capitalism in India. Uh, which was really, really fascinating about how, like, um, all that really matters is wealth. And um, this guy, what, he killed six people. He killed three police officers and three civilians and injured another person and, like, didn't get charged because, like, you know, they did a bunch of stuff. And it was really, really interesting. There was another one, too, that's um, from a book called The Photographer. So some of them are, like, excerpts from uh, books. Um, but this one, I, I really want to buy this book. It's um, Emmanuel um, Guibert. Didier Lefebvre and Frédéric Lemercier, forgive me, I wasn't trying that hard, um, but uh, Didier uh, Lefebvre, sorry, um, he, it says, uh, on, in July uh, of 1986, he left Paris for Afghanistan, he was 29, and his task was to document a Doctors Without Borders mission, um, so he, so there was a war between the Soviet Union and Afghan um, Mujahid, Mujahideen, and so there's um, the the way that it's put together. So with regards to these three people, so one of them is the photographer, and then one of them is a person who kind of like made a comic book about it, and then the other person um, like wrote text, I think. So um, there's so there's uh, photos of his actual trip, and then there's you know little uh, illustrations. Um, this is just all photos. Well, there's, you know, there's a bunch of like actual photographs, but so that was super, super interesting. Um, it's just, it's so good people. <laughs> like these are really, really good. And usually you can find them at used bookstores. So, you know, I encourage you highly to go read them. Um, the other thing that I'm reading is The Bloody Chamber. I don't see, I don't even know how this video gets so long. Uh, The Bloody Chamber by Angela Carter. I was like, oh yeah, I'm just going to read this because it's so teeny. It won't take me that long. Okay, people, there are so many words on every single page, and the writing is, like, quite sophisticated, so it's not it's not an easy read by any means. It is really good. Um, I'm about halfway through. I read, there was two Beauty and the Beast retellings, and then The Bloody Chamber, uh, which is, like, a Bluebeard, I think Bluebeard. I've never read Bluebeard, but I'm pretty sure it's Bluebeard, where he has, like, the wives in the cupboard, not cupboard, like, dead ladies in in a box somewhere and then the girl's like don't he's like don't go in there and then she goes and then you know whatever so uh I think they're really really good but again the language is really sophisticated so it's kind of like when I was reading Dubliners which I still need to finish um where it's just it does take a little bit longer and it is putting me to sleep because I think my brain has to work so hard to read it because it is so it's the language is beautiful and it's very well written but it is it requires a little bit more concentration than I guess I have been used to. The one I read right before this was kind of like popcorn book, so maybe that's why. Um, I'm also going to try to get back into this. Uh, I have put this on my currently reading shelf from my started shelf, so I would like to at least read a little bit. I'm still on page 184. Um, I put tabs in it when I originally started this in 2013. I started this in 2013 when I was working at Let Macaron in Fashion Island. That's a long time ago now. It's been almost five years. So I would like to read some of that. And then um, Hispanic Heritage Month is going to start, I think, before the end of this week. I'm not really sure. Um, I don't have like any specific plans. I've got this, sh these double stack of books over here are like my reads that I'd like, like, the books that I'd like to read this fall. Um, but I know that I am going to be reading um, The Complete Stories of Clarice Lispector with Brie. Um, I guess she's a Brazilian author, so I don't know if it, like, you know, super counts, <laughs> but I'll take it. <laughs> um, I definitely want to read at least um, a couple of things. So this is translated by um, Katrina Dodson. 
So, yeah. Boof, there I go. I'm talking too much. Uh, let me know if you've read any of these books uh, and what you're doing this week or whatever, you know. <coughs> Almost made it. Almost made it the whole video without a weird thing. Okay, I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.